Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we're going to take a look at how to install a PCI Express USB 3 card into our computer. Now, the reason why you're probably watching this is maybe you've got a motherboard which is possibly slightly older or just for some reason doesn't have it, but this is going to be basically adding a USB Type C front panel header. Now the case that this computer is built into actually has an integrated USB type C panel on the top. So obviously it'd be nice to be able to use that at some point, or if you plan on selling a PC and it hasn't got it, these are very, very cheap, inexpensive things to get. You can pick up ones such as this specific one on places like AliExpress for around about seven pounds. Very, very cheap little upgrade to do, and it adds a little bit more functionality. Alternatively, if you've got a motherboard and you're using the type A connection for the USB 3s and those pins are very delicate. So maybe you've mashed the pins on your motherboard and it won't work any longer or there's pins missing, etc. You can easily add one of these into an available PCI Express slot to give you the USB ports back. Now, this particular card is only rated for five gigabit per second, which is the kind of the basic USB 3.2 Gem 1. You can get ones which are faster, obviously, depending on what you need. You can spend more if you want to but for most people five gigabit per second for a couple of type a's and also type c is absolutely fine now another downside of this other than it being slightly slower is the fact that the back plate is actually kind of like a sparkly chrome which doesn't always fit in nicely to blacked out builds but don't worry it's pretty easy to remedy that it's only held on with two screws so you can undo those two screws and give that plate a little coat of paint if you want to Get yourself a rattle can, some matte black paint, or some satin matte black paint, or even some enamel type paint. You can do that, and once it's dried, you can attach it back on, and it won't affect performance at all, and potentially it will look a lot nicer. So that is pretty much the introduction done. Let's take a look at how to actually go about doing this. So the first thing you're going to want to do is to look on your motherboard and look for a spare PCI Express slot, which has at least X1, or times one compatibility. So if we give you a close-up of the motherboard, you can see the times one slots are the small ones. They're around about two inches long. You can use the other slots on your motherboard if you wanted to, which are maybe slightly bigger. Depending on your motherboard, they may be only wired for times one or times four or possibly times eight, maybe even times 16, but you only need a times one slot. If for any reason this is a little bit kind of confusing to you, please feel free to let us know in the comment section or get in touch with us directly on our Discord and I'll try and point you in the right direction if you let me know what motherboard you've got and what the options may be. So to find out if you can actually use this card, if you've got the ports actually on your PC at the top, so I'll give you an overhead view of this, but there's two USB type A's there and there's a type C cable there. So all you're gonna to wanna to do is to find your USB type C cable or header, just follow the wire down through your PC wiring. Luckily for us, I've already pulled this out and we can see here we've got our USB type C front panel connector. Again, if you're using the USB type A plugs, just follow the cable around and follow to the appropriate one. On this particular instance, I've plugged those straight into the motherboard, but our motherboard doesn't have a type C, so that is the cable we're gonna be using. So all you need to do is to pass this through underneath where your power supply goes or somewhere along this bottom section so you can run the cable into the inside. So let's pass that through first. And I would suggest passing as much of the cable through as you possibly can to give you a little bit of slack on the other side. So now we can move through to the front section. So we've got our cable which is coming through here, so that's absolutely fine. Also, something else which you might want to pay attention to is actually on the cable, there is potentially going to be a little triangle or an arrow to say which way round it goes, because these aren't actually universal. They only fit in one way. I'll give you some close-ups of this so you can see the card and also the cable at the same time so you can see where those notches should mark up. Now we'll pay our attention now to our PCI Express slot. So we've got one here, a times one slot. Underneath we've got a times 16 size slot, which is only wired, I think, for times one or times four. And at the bottom, we've got another times one slot. So we can choose any of these. They're all gonna be absolutely fine. Something to bear in mind as well, obviously in this particular instance, I don't have a graphics card installed. So if potentially you've got a quite a big graphics card, it might come down quite far. So you don't really want to be using this slot if you can help it, because potentially it might prevent airflow going into your graphics card. So for this instance, and to make it look a little bit neater, we're gonna use the bottom slot. So in order to use that, we're gonna remove our PCI Express blanking plate, which is directly alongside our slot. This one is the bottom one. And I'm just gonna remove that blanking plate so we can put our new card in. If 
This case has got removable PCI Express brackets. Potentially your case might have ones which you have to kind of bend or wiggle to get out, but either way, it's absolutely fine. Just make sure you've got a blank slot. Next, we're gonna get our PCI Express card. As you can see, there's this one here. It's uh, not anything overly elaborate, but just to highlight some of the points here. So you've got your two ports. So this is for the type A's, and this one here is for the USB type C. There's also a small heat sink on there, which is beneficial if you're doing lots of data throughput. If you're not too sure what speed your card is, normally there'll be a, something printed on the actual card. So this is super speed 5G, so five gigabit per second. Obviously, lots of these are different makes, models, and layouts, but yours should look something like this. As you can see, I've put a very small bit of pen on there just so I know which one is pin one. Sometimes there'll be a little triangle. Again, I'll put some B-roll footage up so you can see what it looks like under a close-up situation. Maybe you can just about make it out on there, but there is a little triangle to denote which pin is which. So pin one is down here. And also on our cable, there should be a small little triangle just over on this far side here. So those have to match up when we plug them in. And what you can do if you wanted is actually to get your PCI Express card and actually plug this in first of all. So take in note of the notch on both sides and just plug it in first of all. And it should click into place. If it doesn't want to go in, don't force it because you'll damage it. And you might need to turn that cable around 180 degrees the other side. So that is basically ready to go. So now all we need to do is to line it up with our PCI Express slot at the bottom of the board and also the slot at the back and just a little bit of pressure and it should lock into place. Now all we need to do is to take our retaining screw and put it back into the slot. It doesn't have to be massively tight just so it's snug and that the card isn't moving. At this point, you can manage your cables and tuck them down however you want to, but essentially that is pretty much it. So when it's done, it's gonna look something similar to this. Now again, obviously, if you're using your type A connection as well, you'll have a cable in there, which you can also route through through any of the channels at the bottom of your chassis. So there we go, there is our PCI Express adapter card installed. We've got a spare bracket now. You can obviously just put that into the packaging or put it into the box. I generally keep all of my boxes in packaging and just put it inside like the motherboard box or the case box so I know where everything is if I ever need to swap anything out. But at this price, around about six or seven pounds for a PCI Express adapter card, realistically, if you do change your mind, you can basically leave it in there because it's not a great deal of money. It's what the price of a couple of cups of coffee these days. Anyway, I'm wittering on now. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting the subscribe button and also the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.